when they think of mammoths, pretty much think of the woolly mammoth. Um, in fact, not all mammoths were woolly. The woolly mammoth was woolly because it was adapted to the very cold ice age environment. If you go further back in time, we think these species wouldn't have had a woolly coat. These earlier mammoths probably looked much more like um, the living Asian or African elephants. Whilst we think of mammoths and elephants as being different, um, actually a mammoth is a special type of elephant. So mammoths have very curvy tusks, whereas the straight tusked elephant, as its name implies, has straight tusks. To understand mammoth evolution, we're completely dependent on fossils, um, particularly fossil teeth, because they're the things that preserve best and most often. This is a fossil tooth, and this was discovered in Crete, the beginning of the 20th century, by a rather remarkable fossil collector called Dorothea Bate. She knew immediately it was a dwarf elephant of some kind, but she um, wasn't really sure uh, which type of elephant, which elephant family it belonged in. So if you look at this tooth and you look at the surface of the tooth where it's wearing down in response to the food that it ate in life, you can see these enamel rings and it's the shape of these enamel rings, like this one here and here, particularly how it's worn into three equal sized rings here um, that tell us it looks like a mammoth. These are characters that are mammoth-like. Now in comparison with say a straight tusked elephant, like this one here, this is a dwarf straight tusked elephant from Cyprus, also collected by Dorothea Bate, the enamel rings on its surface are much more lozenge shape and that's typical of a straight tusked elephant. And that tells us that really this tooth and some of the other teeth that she found at the same locality um, have to be mammoths and aren't straight tusked elephants after all. We decided that we'll go back to her original notes and um, see if we could relocate her original fossil localities on Crete. And we were fortunate enough here to have her original field diaries from 1904. July the 22nd, 1904. Left 6.30 a.m. Rode to a series of monasteries. From there I left the ponies and walked down the stream bed to the sea. We were able to go back and um, follow in her footsteps, literally. And um, sure enough, you will eventually, after about two hours, come to a um, area which is full of fossil remains. This, at last, was the place I have been looking for. We um, walked down the sediment and we found all these skeletal remains. And um, one of them we saw was the uh, remains of an arm bone, a humerus. It was tiny, but we knew it was an adult because the ends had fused, they were, they'd finished growing. Um, and when we measured it, it was about 30 centimetres, just over 30 centimetres, which is about a foot. And um, if you use that to estimate how tall the mammoth would have been, it gives you a shoulder height, so the height up to the shoulders, of about a metre. Um, and that's really, really quite tiny. Its probable ancestor would have been nearer to four metres. Um, a metre tall elephant is about the size of a newborn baby. African or Asian elephant, but this metre tall mammoth would have been an adult. So an adult mammoth, just over a metre tall. The significance of identifying these fossils as being dwarf mammoths is um, twofold. Firstly, uh, it, we can show that this extreme island dwarfism evolved in parallel in both the straight tusked elephants and also in the mammoths. But also, by looking at the shape of the teeth of these dwarf Cretan mammoths, um, it looks like they are most similar to, and um, probably descended from, some of the earliest European mammoths. And that's quite exciting because it could mean that this island dwarfing happened on Crete much earlier than we previously thought, perhaps as early as three and a half million years ago. <laughs>